I'm Larry Menti. Welcome to another thing. Coyotes, bears, and other wildlife have been showing up all over our area in places where they are not normally found. Delaware, for instance, had its first visit by a black bear in over 200 years. South Jersey has had rare sightings. Philadelphia was even visited by a black bear. And there are reports of coyotes in Central Park. What's going on? And how dangerous is what seems to be an invasion? Let's start our coverage with Ellen Kaloje in Philadelphia. Ellen. Thank you, Larry. When you think about bear sightings, you think about seeing them out here in the country. But more often, we're hearing about bear sightings near the cities and the suburbs. So we came out here to Delaware to talk to one expert about why this is happening and what you can do to protect your family. Oh my God. Anytime anyone sees a black bear, it creates quite a stir. There's bears in the pool! I know. Recently, we've heard about bear sightings near cities and suburbs, from inner city Philadelphia in Fairmount Park and Pennypack Park, to a bear sighting in Delaware that caused a lot of commotion. Where he is now, I'm not sure, but yes, we did have one in the northern part for three days, and that's probably our first confirmed bear since possibly colonial times, certainly a couple hundred years. We've had other sightings over the years, but nothing that we've been able to confirm with a picture or tracks or scat or anything like that. So yes, quite big news here. Joe Rogerson is the wildlife biologist for the Delaware Fish and Wildlife Enforcement. He says young male bears usually leave their homes in the spring and go looking for food. But because of a growing population in Maryland and Pennsylvania, we're seeing more bears all over. So be careful. As with any wild animal, you know, keep your distance. Um, you know, bears aren't aggressive by nature or anything like that. But if they're cornered or frightened or something like that, much like even a fox or a raccoon would, they could, you know, retaliate to protect themselves. But if you keep your distance, back away slowly, go inside, you know, you can call Fish and Wildlife. Some other tips include making sure you do not shoot near a bear or any wild animal to scare it, but instead clap or make loud noises to try to scare it away. And remove all food, such as bird feeders, if you do hear of any reports of bears in the area. They're seclusive by nature. They don't want to be around us. They don't want to be frightened and harassed and scared and stuff like that. So if folks, when they see these animals, whether it's a bear, a coyote, a fox or whatever, if they scare them, chase them off. But they are more scared of us than them. A lot of times these animals are nearby people and they don't even know it. They slink off back into the brush or the woods and cover and they don't even get observed or seen by folks. So Rogerson says because of the growing bear population, it's not a matter of if we'll have another bear sighting here in Delaware and the surrounding states. It's a matter of when. Reporting for another thing, I'm Ellen Kaloje. All right, thank you, Ellen. Let's continue our conversation on wildlife in our midst. David Chanda is the director of New Jersey Division of Fish and Wildlife. Sir, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. You have all of these reports about black bears showing up in places that you that they normally don't show up in. And you have all of these reports about coyotes now in Central Park and in areas where we don't normally see them. Is there an increase in their population? Are they just getting bolder? What's happening? Not really an increase in the population, but they are expanding the range uh, throughout New Jersey, both black bear and coyote. We have reliable sightings from Sussex all the way down to Cape May for both species. Um, they're both very adaptable animals, so they've learned how to live in and around uh, human activity. And, and most times people don't even know they have a black bear or coyote in their area. Now, why are they showing up in new areas, though? Is it that they're getting bolder, or are they just looking for food? Well, you know, typically with a black bear, this is the time of the year that the young males are being chased out uh, of the, uh, the territory they're living in. Uh, their, their mother is now looking to mate with another black bear, and it's time for the young to get out on their own. So typically in these areas, you'll see a small young male. They're typically about 150 pounds. Uh, they have to go find a new habitat. So some go to New York. Some go to Pennsylvania and some come down here in South. And the, the way they wind up in these urban areas is you think about the open space plan that New Jersey has. We've done a great job of protecting open space and you have all these green corridors, waterways, and those animals are following those. And next thing you know, they wind up in a highly urban area 
you can't figure out how to get out of it. And that's usually when we'll respond to, you know, if the animal can't find its own way out, we're gonna come help it get out. And what is your protocol on something like that? You get the call, do you immediately respond, and then what do you do? We work very closely with all the communities, and uh, you know, we'll ask a lot of information about where the bear is, what it's doing. Um, you know, if it's just a bear being a bear, we encourage the towns to leave it alone. You know, and a lot of times they'll say, well, it's not leaving. Well, the reason it's not leaving is because you have 100 people under the tree looking up at it and taking pictures. So if you leave it alone, it'll find its way out. Um, if it's a bear that's being aggressive, we respond immediately and, uh, you know, our policy is a bear that's posing a threat to people, you know, we immediately put it down. Well, that's interesting. They just had a bear show up in Delaware and they claim in Delaware they don't have any bears. They've never had any bears. They said it was the first bear sighting in 200 years. And I was thinking to myself, why have, why don't they go after this bear? It went, came in from Pennsylvania, went all the way down to Maryland. You just answered the question. I if you can, you'd really rather not bother it. Yes. Yeah. I mean, if it's just a bear being a bear, we, we've, for the past 25 years, we've done a tremendous amount of work educating people on how to interact with black bears and what to do if you see a black bear and how to live in black bear country. A lot of it's focused in North Jersey because that's where the most bear are located in our state. But we've actually now, because they're expanding into South Jersey, uh, we've been doing a lot more education programs with schools, with homeowners. There's a wealth of information on our website on both coyotes and black bear and what you need to do if you're living in an area that might have one. And our website is njfishandwildlife.com. Uh, so folks can learn how to get some assistance from us if they need it or what to do on their own. So your confidence in not doing anything must come from history and that the black bears haven't attacked anybody. Well, we, unfortunately, we have had an incident in New Jersey where a, a hiker was killed by a black bear, which is almost unheard of in all of North America. So like any animal that's large, you, know, you need to treat it with respect and, and be aware that something could happen bad. Uh, but for the most part, when you encounter a bear in the wild, they usually leave the area. Let's talk about the coyotes for a second, because New York Times did an article that fascinated me, and it showed the increasing coyote population in the East Coast. And, the, and in urban areas, they showed them in Central Park, walking through the Lincoln Tunnel. Yes. But I don't see them. Yeah. Are they pretty good at hiding? They're excellent at, at being unseen, same, same as a black bear. And the coyotes are... Uh, you know, coyote is a very interesting animal because it got here all on its own. It's a separate species from its western cousin. It's actually larger. The western variety of coyote, you know, they'll weigh 25, 35 pounds. But the way the eastern coyote got here was it migrated through the Upper Great Lakes region, came down through Canada, through the New England states. And in that process, it interbred with wolves. So our coyotes tend to be 45 pounds, maybe a little bit larger. But absolutely, they know how to live in and around those urban areas. They feed mostly on small rodents, so they're chasing mice, they're after squirrels, rabbits, things like that. But again, if people are leaving food in their yard that could serve as an attractant, if they're feeding uh, their cat outdoors or they're feeding uh, feral cats, that's all going to attract the coyote into the area. Well, it's interesting that you mentioned feeding cats outside because one of the things I heard, and you can tell me whether it's a myth or not, that if you, you, you chances are you and your family is not going to be attacked by a coyote, but your pet might be. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, and we've had a couple of incidents in New Jersey where the coyote was ill and uh, you know people had to fend it off. Fortunately, we were able to get out there and uh, capture and, and, and kill those individuals. Uh, but small pets are very vulnerable to a, a coyote attack. And usually if a person is involved in it, they're walking a dog on a leash and they're in an area that might have uh, the habitat that could support the coyote and the interactions with the dog that they're walking in the coyote and then you know the person gets involved in it just because they're on the other end of the leash. So I'm getting the bottom line on all of this, just leave them alone. That's it. If you see wildlife, just leave it alone, it will leave you alone. That's correct. And your website one more time? It's njfishandwildlife.com. Wonderful, thank you so much thank for you. spending the time. I appreciate it. David Chanda, director of the New Jersey Division of Fish and Wildlife. Animals have been in the news recently. We had that horrible incident at the Cincinnati Zoo when a young child fell into an enclosure with a gorilla. Since then, there has been a cry for better safety precautions at zoos across the country. We'll talk about that when another thing continues.